video, you got to see a drawing talking about channel proteins and different ways that ions are able to pass through the cell membrane. In this video, we'll kind of finish up talking about that and a few different things, and then we'll move on to another drawing. So, one other way that ions can pass through the cell membrane is through a process called diffusion, and diffusion moves down their concentration gradient. So this is passive, there's no ATP required because this is the natural way that ions want to move. So for example, if we look at this picture down here on the bottom left, you can see this gray thing is acting as a cell membrane. In teal here, this is gonna be the inside of the cell, and then in white here, this is the outside of the cell. Here we can see inside the cell there are three, six, nine ions, and outside of the cell there are only two. So because of diffusion, they want to equalize these as best as possible. So there would be like five on one side and six on the other side. They want to cause equilibrium. In addition to moving with their concentration gradient, ions also move along their electrical gradient. So this is also passive, and this is talking about the charge of the cell inside or out. So for example, if the inside of the cell is plus 100 millivolts and the outside of the cell is minus 100 millivolts, outside of the cell, some negative ions will go in and positive ions will go out so that it's about 50-50 um, or so the charge would be zero then. They want to cause an equilibrium. Like I talked about in the video, the membrane potential is basically just the change of electricity across the membrane and this is the ability to do work. This is what allows the cell to have electrical stimuli. So this develops because of changes in sodium and potassium ions due to that ATPase pump that we talked about, and this allows nervous tissue to be excitable, and that's what we cause um, electrical potentials, or we'll talk about local potentials and action potentials, and that's what allows muscles and nerves to actually do things. For this group think, I suggest that you try your best to go through it on your own and then scroll down to look at the answers yourself. So hopefully you paused for a second and were able to find these answers here. These states are really important to know, like the back of your hand, they will be really helpful for you moving on. This slide is basically just showing you the same thing that I drew, that there are a lot of potassium ions inside of the cell and a lot of sodium ions outside of the cell. So we call this intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid. So the membrane potential is based off of several ions. The two most important that you guys need to know are sodium and potassium. If we lived in a hypothetical world where potassium was the only thing deciding the membrane potential, it would leak out of the cell um, until it's balanced by the electrical gradient. So it would be negative 90. The regular resting membrane potential is negative 70. So you can see this is quite a bit um, lower than what the regular resting membrane potential would be. If only sodium was in charge, sodium would leak into the cell until it's balanced by its electrical gradient, and the membrane potential would be plus 60 millivolts. Again, normal is negative 70. So here we think, hmm, which one is causing more influence on the actual resting membrane potential? So which one is closer to negative 70? And we would definitely say potassium. Okay, so here we're asking um, sodium potassium pumps have a small effect, but what's the rest of the effect? 
sodium or potassium and why. And like I just said, it's potassium because the resting potential is negative 70, which is closer to negative 90 than it is plus 60. So if you remember the negative 90, that was the potassium and 60 was the sodium. Okay, that's not working. This should be sodium here. So we just decided that the resting potential is based more off of um, potassium than it is sodium because the potassium is closer to negative 70 than the sodium. So this tells us something really, really important that there are a lot of potassium leak channels present on the cell membrane and there are a few sodium leak channels. So there are more potassium leak channels, more potassium diffuses out into the extracellular fluid and sodium goes in. So the membrane potential is just the resting electrical state of the cell. There are two different types of changes that we can have that cause things to happen. So we call them potentials. So there are graded or local potentials and then there are action potentials. And these both happen by change in ion across the membrane. So sodium and potassium exchange and that causes a change in electricity. Graded or local potentials are going to be smaller. They're one millimeter maximum on the cell and they're just depolarizing or hyperpolarizing the membrane. So these are small, they occur only when the cell is stimulated, so they're not going to happen without any signal. Um, and these are caused by local changes in ion flow. So sodium rushes into the cell, and that makes it more positive, and that's what we call a local potential. These are the properties of the local or graded potentials. So the first one is graded. So the stronger the stimulus, the stronger the electrical change. So here on the left, the top graph is showing the graded potential, how big it is and how long it lasts. And then the bottom graph is looking at the magnitude, so how strong the stimulus is. So you can see on the left, a small stimulus results in a small potential. And on the right, a large stimulus results in a large potential. They are local, so they're going to be really small, just confined to one area. They're decremental, so that means as they spread across the plasma membrane, they decrease in their strength. Local potentials can be excitatory or inhibitory, so they can either depolarize or hyperpolarize the cell. They can make it more likely to cause an action potential or less likely to cause an action potential. And we'll go through each one of those in a little bit. The duration of the signal is proportional to the duration of the triggering event. So if you look at the graph on the left, you can see the stimulus here on the far right lasts longer. So the graded potential also lasts longer. So the current is the movement of electrical changes. So you can see here on the right, this diagram, there is a plasma membrane and inside of the cell and then a teal, this is outside of the cell. There's a sodium channel that is allowing sodium ions to go in and out of the cell. So what happens is this opens, this channel opens, sodium rushes in and that causes a graded potential here. The parts that aren't highlighted in yellow are inactive, they're just resting. But the original area then will trigger the next area to happen and the next area. So they move across all parts of the membrane. They can move in both directions, so we call that bidirectional. And then they're contiguous, so they can 
touch every single part of the membrane. This slide is just showing the process that happens when a local potential happens, and as it spreads, it decreases in size. So the initial activation area here on the graph is going to be the highest part, and then as the local potential spreads along the membrane, it decreases in magnitude. On the next video, I'll show you a drawing about action potentials. Feel free to go through these slides on your own about action potentials and then come look at the drawing when you're ready.